Welcome to Brainish English Stories. It was eleven o'clock. There was a knock at the door. I hope I didn't wake you up, madam. You weren't sleeping, were you? I just gave my lady her tea, and there was an extra cup left. So I thought, maybe you'd like some. Not at all, madam. I always make tea at the end of the night. She drinks it in bed after her prayers to make her warm. I boil the water when she starts praying, and I say to the kettle, "Now, don't rush your prayers." But the water is always ready before she finishes praying. You see, madam, we know a lot of people, and she prays for all of them, everyone. My lady has a list of names in a little red book. Oh dear! When someone new comes to see us, and my lady says, "Ellen, give me my little red book. I feel tired." There's another one, I think, keeping her out of bed for longer, and she won't use a cushion, madam. She kneels on the hard carpet. It makes me very worried to see her because I know her so well. I tried to help her. I spread out the blanket for her, but the first time I did that, oh, she gave me such a look. It was holy, madam. When I tucked her in just now and saw her lying back, her hands on top of the blanket and her head on the pillow, so beautiful. I couldn't help thinking, now you look just like your dear mother when I took care of her. Yes, madam. I had to do everything for her. Oh, she looked so sweet. I did her hair softly around her forehead, in pretty little curls, and just beside her neck, I put some beautiful purple flowers. Those flowers made her look perfect, madam. I will never forget them. Tonight, when I looked at my lady, I thought, now if only the flowers were here, no one would know the difference. But one day I got some scissors, and would you believe it, madam? I cut off all my hair. I chopped it off in little pieces, like the little monkey I was. Grandfather was so angry. He grabbed the hot tongs. I'll never forget it. He took my hand and closed my fingers in them. That'll teach you, he said. It was a very bad burn. I still have the scar today. You see, madam, he was so proud of my hair. He used to sit me up on the counter before the customers came, and he would make my hair look beautiful, big, soft curls, and waved on top. I remember the assistants watching, and I sat very serious. Holding the penny grandfather gave me while he did my hair, but he always took the penny back afterwards. Poor grandfather, he was so upset at how I looked after cutting my hair, but he really scared me that time. Do you know what I did, madam? I ran away. Yes, I did. I ran around corners, in and out. And I don't know how far I ran. Oh dear! I must have looked funny with my hand wrapped up in my apron and my hair all messy. People must have laughed when they saw me. No, madam, grandfather never got over it. He couldn't stand to look at me after that. He couldn't even eat his dinner if I was there. So my aunt took me in. She was a cripple and worked as an upholsterer. She was very small. She had to stand on the sofas to cut the backs of them, and it was while helping her that I met my lady. I wasn't very young, madam. I had just turned thirteen, 
And I don't remember ever feeling well, like a child, as you might say. I had my uniform and other things. My lady made me wear collars and cuffs from the very beginning. Oh, yes, there was one time I felt like a child. That was funny. It happened like this. My lady had her two little nieces staying with her. We were in Sheldon at the time, and there was a fair on the common. Now, Ellen, she said, I want you to take the two young ladies for a ride on the donkeys. So off we went. The little girls were very quiet, holding my hands. But when we got to the donkeys, they were too shy to go on. So we just watched instead. Those donkeys were beautiful. They were the first donkeys I had seen that weren't pulling carts. They were there for fun, you could say. They were lovely silver gray with little red saddles, blue bridles, and bells jingling on their ears. Even big girls older than me were riding them and having a great time. They weren't acting common, madam, just enjoying themselves. And I don't know why, but the way the little feet moved, the gentle eyes, and the soft ears made me want to ride a donkey more than anything in the world. Of course, I couldn't. I had to take care of the young ladies. And what would I have looked like sitting up on a donkey in my uniform? But all day, I couldn't stop thinking about donkeys. Donkeys were stuck in my head. I felt like I would burst if I didn't tell someone, but who could I tell? That night, I was sleeping in Mrs. James's bedroom. She was our cook at the time. As soon as the lights were out, I saw the donkeys again in my mind, with their neat little feet and sad eyes. Well, madam, would you believe it? I waited for a long time, pretending to be asleep, and then suddenly I sat up and shouted as loud as I could, I do want to go on a donkey. I do want a donkey ride. You see, I had to say it, and I thought no one would laugh at me if they thought I was only dreaming. Clever of me, wasn't it? That's just how a silly child would think. No, madam, not anymore. Of course, I thought about it once. But it wasn't meant to be. He had a little flower shop just down the road, across from where we were living. Funny, wasn't it? And me, loving flowers so much. We had a lot of visitors at the time, so I was going in and out of the shop a lot. And Harry and I, his name was Harry, started arguing about how to arrange things, and that's how it started. Flowers. You wouldn't believe it, madam, the flowers he used to bring me. He wouldn't stop at anything. He even brought me lilies of the valley more than once, and I'm not exaggerating. Well, of course, we were going to get married and live above the shop, and everything was going to be just perfect. I was going to arrange the shop window. Oh, how I've dreamed of doing that window every Saturday. Not for real, madam just in my head. I've decorated it for Christmas with a holly sign and everything. I've had Easter lilies in it with a big star made of daffodils in the middle. I've hung well. That's enough of that. The day came when he was supposed to pick me up to choose the furniture. Will I ever forget it? It was a Tuesday. My lady wasn't feeling well that afternoon. She didn't say anything, of course. She never does and never will. 
but I knew something was wrong because she kept wrapping herself up and asking if it was cold, and her little nose looked pinched. I didn't like leaving her. I knew I'd be worried the whole time. Finally, I asked her if she'd rather I stayed. Oh no, Ellen, she said. Don't worry about me. You mustn't disappoint your young man. And she was so cheerful, madam, never thinking of herself. That made me feel even worse. I started to wonder. Then she dropped her handkerchief and bent down to pick it up herself, something she never did. What are you doing? I cried, running to stop her. Well, she said, smiling. Madam, I should start practicing. Oh, it was all I could do not to cry. I went over to the dressing table and pretended to polish the silver, but I couldn't hold it in, and I asked her if she'd rather I didn't get married. No, Ellen, she said. Her voice sounded just like I'm telling you now. No, Ellen, not for the whole world. But while she said it, Madam. I was looking at her in the mirror. Of course, she didn't know I could see her. She put her little hand on her heart, just like her dear mother used to, and lifted her eyes. Oh, madam, when Harry came, I had his letters ready and the ring, and the cute little brooch he'd given me. A silver bird it was. With a chain in its beak, and at the end of the chain was a heart with a dagger. Quite fancy. I opened the door to him. I didn't give him a chance to say a word. Here you go, I said. Take them all back, I said. It's all over. I'm not going to marry you, I said. I can't leave my lady. He turned white. White as a woman, I had to slam the door, and there I stood, shaking all over until I knew he was gone. When I opened the door, believe it or not, madam, he was gone. I ran out into the street, just as I was, in my apron and my house shoes, and there I stood in the middle of the street, staring. People must have laughed if they saw me. Oh goodness! What's that? It's the clock striking, and here I've kept you awake. Oh, madam, you should have stopped me. Can I tuck in your feet? I always tuck in my lady's feet every night, just the same. And she says, "Good night, Ellen. Sleep well and wake up early." I don't know what I would do if she didn't say that now. Oh dear! I sometimes think, what would I do if anything happened to her? But thinking doesn't help, does it, madam? Thinking won't solve anything. Not that I do it often. And if I ever do, I stop myself quickly. Now, Ellen, stop it, you silly girl. If you can't find anything better to do than to start thinking.